just want to share this morning some basics with us. Uh, Jesus, the Son of God, is, a, is an amazing God. And, you know, a lot of times we, we get caught up in things and, and we forget a lot of stuff. We forget sometimes to just stop and, and, and give Him thanks for, for saving us. I don't know where you would be if, if God hadn't intervened in your life. I don't know what would have happened to me if, if somehow or other God didn't, by His Spirit, get a hold of me and, and reveal Himself to me. And as a Christian, as a, as a, as a baby Christian, uh, start to speak to me through His Word and encourage me and, and then through prophetic and other, other gifts of God just to take you to another level. See, the prophetic's not there to puff you up. The prophetic's there to take you to another level. The prophetic's there to tell you what God has made available for you. It's, I, I'd liken it to a menu. You look at the menu and that all these things are available. You can have the lot. But sometimes we just pick one. But God wants so much more for us. He wants us to live in victory and He wants us to triumph over every work of the enemy. And there is an enemy out there. But, you know, I, I just really feel that, that we're coming to a place where we, where we have to stop and, and, and think about Jesus and, and, and just honor Him and love Him and, and tell Him how much we really appreciate Him and, and our Father in heaven, that, that He's just so amazing. He is an amazing God. So Jesus, was a, you know, though He's a man, He was also the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God, came to planet Earth to pay the price to redeem mankind from sin. Jesus had a purpose. He had a plan. He wasn't going on a holiday. He wasn't going to have a look at what it was like over there. No, He came with a purpose, and He knew the whole purpose before He even came. He knew the things that He would have to go through. He knew the, the rejection. He knew the, the situation that, he, that faced him. But he came uh, to pay the price. To pay the price. If we can just get that, there's nothing I can do other than accept Jesus to receive the fullness of what he did for me. I can't be better. I can't do this better. I can't do that better. I can't try to. All I've got to do is accept it. To be able to accept that Jesus paid the price. If somebody bought me a new car and they paid the price, I'd be silly then if I said, now what have I got to do to buy this? What have I got to do to pay for it? What have I got to do? I just have to drive the thing away and accept the goodness of the person. And, I, and today, I, I guess I want to reflect a little bit on the goodness of the person, the person Jesus, who loved me so much while I was yet a sinner, He died for me. He came to pay the price for every rotten, filthy thing that I could ever do or ever have done. And I read the Scripture last week, and I want to read it again, 2 Corinthians 5.21. It's for, it says, For He, God, made Him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. Just think of that for a moment. God sent His only Son to become sin for us. You know, the, the, the most horrible thing in God's mind is sin. The most horrible, horrible thing that, that could ever, God could ever think of is sin because sin is so, so, so horrible. And yet God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin. In other words, he was perfect. He made him to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him, that we might become. And that's the thing that, that I guess God wants us to become something. He wants us to become His church, His people that carry something so dynamic and so powerful. Jesus became sin for us. Jesus is the Savior of the world. You might say, Neil, that's just so kindergarten, but He's the Savior of the world. He's come to save the world he, Jesus, loved us so much that He became sin for us. I, I cannot comprehend that. 
I wouldn't want to put anything on one of my children. I wouldn't want to put anything on anybody, any hurt, any pain. But God so loved us that he knew that there was a ransom that had to be paid. And he sent him who knew no sin to become sin for us. That's amazing, amen. That is an amazing thing. That's worth lifting up your hands and saying, Lord, I love you. That's worth lifting up your heart and saying, my God, my God. And, and, and letting your heart go out to God. Friends, we can become so, so religious or, or case-hardened or, or so used to status quo coming into church and that. We live in the world, we live out there, and we, we have to be tough, we have to be this, we have to be that. And so when we come into church, we, we carry some of the garments. But friend, we've got to lift those garments off. The blind man, when Jesus had come to me immediately, before he was healed, before anything happened to him, he took off that beggar's garment. And we've got to take off some garments when we come into church. It's okay for a man to cry. It's okay for a man to, to, to have a soft heart. It's okay. It's okay to, to, love, to love Jesus with all of your heart. It's okay to say, God, I want you more than anything else. More than silver and gold, more than anything else. And yet the world wants more silver and gold than anything else. They want more of this and more of that. But Jesus, this one who loved us so much, he paid the price. Jesus only wants what's best for me. If I can get some thoughts into my mind, Jesus doesn't want to deliver me from the shackles and the chains and the bondages of sin so that he can hang me as a trophy on the wall. He doesn't want to deliver me from those sort of things just so that he can boast. He knows and He wants the best for me. He wants me to be free from the shackles and the pain. And I know I've lived long enough to know that when you do stumble and fall and the way that that foul, rotten devil comes with his bucket full of condemnation and pours it all over you and makes you feel so horrible and yuck, as he pours out his fury and his wrath. And Jesus says, Neil, I don't want to put a band-aid on you. I want to deliver you. I want to set you free so you can look at the enemy eyeball to eyeball and know that you're free. There is a devil out there that wants to rob, kill, and destroy. And we've seen many a good person, even in the church, where the enemy has destroyed them. People that once have loved and marriages and goodness knows what, they were once beautiful and loving and kind and the enemy gets in and causes conflict and trouble and strife. As he pours out his fury. He wants to rob, kill and destroy everything that God has established in people's lives. Everything that God wants to do. I want you to indelibly print in your mind, God only wants the best for you. Jesus only wants the best for you. And if he says to me, Neil, I want that. I need that. I want that. And if you can somehow or other say, God, you want it because you want the best for me. You know that this is a stronghold in my life or you know whatever it is. And be able to yield to him. But I thank God that there's a Christ out there that wants to give me life and wants to give it to me more abundantly. Amen? I want to just read some scriptures to you this morning. John chapter 16. I'm going over stuff that I spoke last week. But it's, uh, to me, it's, it's so important. It 
It's a good thing when God can put you in His hand. Amen? It's a good thing when God can start to squeeze your heart a bit. It's a good thing when God can, can come and somehow or other touch your old stony heart and soften it a bit. Amen? I don't know about you, but I need a lot of softening. <laughs> that cuddly stuff that they put in the washing machine won't work. <laughs> but oh, the Holy Ghost will. God only wants the best for you. Jesus speaking here, disciples in verse 6, 16, 6, he said, because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. He's talking about what was going to happen to him. He's talking about going away, dying on a cross, goodness knows what else. But it says in verse 7, it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. The helper. <laughs> Friend, today the helper wants to come to you. The Holy Spirit wants to come to you. But many times when he comes, when he comes and he starts to speak to us and might just start to touch a couple of things, we, we sort of, we walk away. Don't touch that. Friend, I want to say it's a time to embrace the helper. Let him come. Why don't we lift up our hands and say, helper, will you come? Will you help me? Will you help me this morning? Will you help us come closer to Jesus? Will you help us walk through this minefield? Will you help us walk through this, whatever's in front of us? Can you, will you help me walk through it? The helper wants to come. It's going to keep reading here. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. That's his promise. He said, I was, I'm going to send him to you. He's going to send him to me. He's going to send him to John. He's going to send him to Fred. He's going to send him to you. He wants to send the Holy Spirit to you to help you. And when he has come... He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of, the, of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is already judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me, and he will take of what is mine and, deliver, and declare it to you. All things the Father has are mine. See, the Holy Spirit is very, very active, very, very much in the atmosphere. He's coming to, to touch us and he, he wants to lead us and he wants to guide us. He wants to reveal truth to us. He wants to reveal truth, the helper. God sent us the Savior to, li to deliver us from the clutches of Satan. And we can declare today, my soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. Now God has sent a helper the Holy Spirit won't speak of Himself. In, in verse 13 it says, He's going to glorify Jesus. He's going to magnify the Son of God. How amazing is that? But not only that, He's going to speak truth to us. He's going to lead us and guide us. Don't resist the Holy Spirit's leading. He wants to guide you into all truth. Satan's lies and words spoken over you. And I'm aware to, today that there are many, many people in churches, people that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, people who know God, people who love God with a passion, people who worship and love Jesus. 
are still bound by the clutches of an enemy, by words that have been spoken over your life, by things that that have crept into your belief system that need to be broken. Chains are broken, amen. Chains have to be broken. Satan's lies and words spoken over you can still have place in your lives and hold us bound. It's only the truth that can set you free. It's only the leading of the Holy Spirit that really will convict you and convince you of sin or or the lies of the devil. We can sometimes talk to somebody for ages and ages and ages and somehow or other it doesn't go in. But then all of a sudden one day they'll come and they'll say, I was reading my Bible, I was in prayer, I was doing this and the Spirit of God spoke to me and He said thus and thus and thus and you think to yourself, man, I've been telling you that for years. See, friend, we need the leading of the Spirit. There's a lot of times when we talk to people, they don't really want to be delivered. They really don't want to be free. They just want sympathy. They just want somebody to sit beside them and, and stroke their problem. But Jesus doesn't want to just give you sympathy. He wants to deliver us. And only the Holy Ghost can deliver us. Only the Spirit of truth can deliver us. And the Helper has come to take us to a place. Don't push away the mighty Holy Spirit. Give Holy Spirit access in your life. Open the door. Say, come on, Holy Spirit. Come on into my life. Help me. Help me. Satan li- Satan's lies and, and words spoken over you can still have a place in your life. You've got to break that stronghold, only the truth. Nancy, when she was a couple of weeks old, was adopted out. She went through great conflict. Her adopted mother thought that Nancy had died as a child because there was another sibling in the household that passed away. So they thought that she was dead and the mother never ever sought after her child. She was told, child is dead, don't worry, get on with your life. And she tried to do that. I don't know what was the anguish in her soul, I don't know what was going on inside her, but she tried to live her life. But Nancy, the the result of this, as a young baby growing up into into womanhood, who am I? She started to go to church as a little girl. When your name, when your name is, when the roll is called up yonder, something like that. Nancy used to say, "What name will be on the roll?" Because I know that I had another name, and now I've got a different name. What name? How will I know my name? Who am I? What am I? Held Nancy bound for forty odd plus years or more. It's only the spirit of truth that can set you free. And there's a man by the name of Tom Marshall who came to a meeting and Nancy was sitting there. It's this still much on her mind and, and, and the man walked up to her and prophesied over her and said, the Lord knows your name. <laughs> and you see, only the spirit can set you free. All the the love and attention and everything else, stroking it and saying, oh, man, and all that. It wasn't until later on in life when Nancy met up with her mother, the natural mother, she got the shock of her life. Don't resist the Holy Spirit's leading. Don't resist. I could have missed out on a lot. Last night, I was tired. It was late. I don't like being late. But it happened to be that as I walked in late, that the man was already up preaching. But as I walked in, the Spirit of God spoke to him. And after he finished preaching, and after he finished doing whatever he was doing, 
He pointed his finger and said, that man at the back there, come out here. I don't know who you are. But he said, I see you as an apostle. I was just an old man sitting in the back seat. And he started to talk about my life. And he said things there that if he wasn't spot on, he would have got thrown out of town. But he spoke. Tom was there. Others were there. You can miss out. Miss out on what God wants to do, what God wants to say, wants to encourage us. Don't resist the Holy Spirit's leading. The Holy Spirit is the manager the overseer of God's church on planet Earth. He's the overseer. He's the manager. I want you to have a quick look here, if you will, in the book of Luke. This helping anybody? I see three nods so I can keep going. Jesus said these words, Luke 4, 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book and he gave it back to the attendants and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Friend, there's a lot of things that have been fulfilled in our hearing that God wants to bring to pass in your present now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. In John 3, 21, he spoke, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. The, hand, the move of God came upon his life. Jesus began to demonstrate the power of God in man. Jesus the man, he demonstrated the power of God by healing the sick, by having authority over the elements. He walked on the water, he calmed the sea. By having authority over demons, he told a legion of demons to go, and they went. Then he said in John 14, 12, 16, Most assuredly, I say to you, these things that I do, you shall do also. Friend, there's some things there that have, that have been said in our hearing. And these, this might be one of those things. These things that I do, you shall do also. And greater things than this shall you do, because I go to my Father. And these are things that might have been spoken in our, just in our hearing, and we hear this thing, but we haven't actually seen the manifestation of it. But I want to tell you, there's a generation of people that are daring to believe God, that are starting to rise up, they're starting to say, God, I believe. I believe what you say. You said you're going to do it, and I believe you're going to do it. If you said these things that I do, you can do also, then greater things than this shall you do. Well, my God, I'm believing you. And though we may not see it, though it may only be in our hearing, if you're not pressing towards it, you'll never reach it. If you don't set your car towards home today, you won't get there. If you don't get, start heading in a direction that you want to go or that God by His Spirit is telling you, and some of the things that God will tell you by His Spirit will keep you awake at night. Some of the things that God wants to do in our lives will keep us awake. And it might only be in our hearing, but if we can let God by His Spirit lead us, if we can say, God, this is what you want to do. If you remember some months ago, it might be 12 months ago, we had a prophet come through and said that God wants to establish again the, 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 what, the, the tabernacle of David in our midst. He spoke about a few things there that I have to listen to the tape. I've listened to it that many times, but I need to listen to it again and again and again. 
Because that's what God said. And sometimes it might be just in our hearing. This is what God wants to do. But I want to tell you, if we don't give God time, if we don't give God room, if we don't say, come on, let, let's, let's do this, or, or let's just open it up. Let's not just sing five songs, two slow ones and three fast ones, and then have a shunder a Monday. <laughs> But make room for the Holy Spirit to come in to invade our lives. Make room for God to come in and, and activate and motivate. I, I make no excuse for praying for the prophets and, the, and people that had a gift on their life. I make no excuse for that because I want to activate, I want to motivate, I want to release, I want to see the kingdom established on this planet. And nothing will happen while we're sitting around playing tiddlywinks. But it will happen if we keep pressing towards it, if we keep walking towards it, if we keep moving towards it. Jesus is the lover of my soul. Jesus wants so desperately. When I was writing this down, I, I thought, is that a good word? Does that? No. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He wept over the unbelief. He so he, he wants so desperately for us to be delivered from wrong thinking, from unbelief. Jesus desperately, desperately wants to see us free. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. It's John 14, 13. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke, friend. Jesus stood and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I don't know about you, but I just want the Spirit of God on me. Amen. I see man trying to run the show. I've seen in my time, sad to say, I've seen man destroy a move of God. Your own pride, arrogance, In some areas, I've had my part to play. Thinking you're doing the right thing because you listen to man and not to the Spirit of God. Bill Hybels come on the scene with a great idea. And they took everything of the Spirit of God out of the church to make people feel comfortable. I've seen great men of God fall as they allowed the enemy to take root in their lives. I must say, last night I got the shock of my life. And you will when you read it. <laughs> Tom's laughing. you'll get a shock. But if it's going to happen, I just don't want it to be in my hearing. I want it to be an experience. Amen? Holy Spirit. You can feel the Holy Ghost all over this place. Why don't we just stand? How many people catch my drift here today? <laughs> Is that okay? How many people really want to get led by the Spirit? Come on. Why don't we throw it while we're waiting for the musicians? Come on, why don't we just throw our hands in the air? Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, mighty Holy Ghost. Come on, power of God.
Oh, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing is getting on Millie. Look out. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Come on, have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Oh, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. The mighty power of God. God, you love us so much that you allowed your son to become sin for me. I, w I want you to let indelibly print some of these things in your mind. Oh, my God, you allowed him to become sin. Oh, to God be the glory. We can start to sing it, can we? Here she comes. Here she comes. Here she comes. That's all right, darling. It's okay. We don't have any order of service here. We don't have any problems here. We just want Jesus. Just say that I just want you, Jesus. I just want your Holy Spirit. I just want you to come in your own special way. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We're going to sing that again. But to just put those words up again, that last verse. To God for the things he has done. With his power he has raised me. Is that the first verse or the second verse? Is there only one verse? <laughs> I can get two verses out of that. <laughs> if I just want... I just want to open this altar up for people who just want to say, I don't know what I want to say now, but you want him to raise you up. That's what I was thinking. You want him to raise you up, to, to empower you, to breathe on you, to, to whatever. There's something this morning that's buzzing around you that you just want God to, to do something in your life and it might be breaking a bondage it may be pulling down something it may be releasing you into something I don't know maybe you, you, you've been so bound by wrong thinking I don't know and it might be that you just love Jesus with every fiber of your being but you just want to say God I want more I want to give you more of me just as we sing this song, would you like to just slip out the front here? You may not pray for you, may not touch you. I just want you to respond to God. Just respond to Him. Okay, here we go. To God be the glory. To God. See you. 